Okay. <clears throat> see we had a small technical delay but um, importantly we have now we now have a uh, technician that's on board to let you know when there's a technical delay so we're thankful for that uh, well happy Thanksgiving to everybody here a few days late I hope you had a, a wonderful time uh, whether that be with just very few people or if you were able to join with anybody uh, safely during this pandemic Thanksgiving, I just wanted to wish you all Thanksgiving, or happy Thanksgiving, and what an unbelievably beautiful weekend we've had. It's a little chilly today, but um, I actually got sunburned yesterday out working in the yard, so that was, that was pretty exciting. For those of you maybe joining us who aren't from North Dakota, we have had a tremendous fall so far in terms of the weather, so we're really thankful for that. Um, as you can see, I want to welcome you all to the first Sunday of Advent. Uh, we have um, a bit of a, a, a change in our scenery here in the house for our, for our service. Uh, we put the tree up yesterday and the kids uh, decorated it beautifully. We have our <clears throat> chimney uh, for Santa Claus, of course, to be able to get into our house. We have um, uh, the piano, everything here in the corner, the guitar, the piano, so we're ready for Advent. And, wonderfully, Sarah was able to... Um, very, uh, 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 just very quickly put together an, an Advent wreath uh, here this morning, and, and so we, we got that done, and we're going to have the Advent wreath lit here in just a moment. So it is Advent, it's the first Sunday of the Christian year in that way as well, and so we're going to celebrate Advent today, we're going to celebrate with uh, one of my favorite Advent songs, I think one of many people's favorite Advent songs. I'm also going to share a couple of new verses that <clears throat> we came across for this song. Also today, we have a guest speaker. It's a very exciting day. I hope that you'll stick around for that. Um, I asked him to come from a long ways away, so he's not quite here yet, but um, we're hoping he gets here by the time he needs to speak. Right, Alice? And the kids, everybody's just really, really eager to see who this is, because I haven't told anybody who's Except coming Mom. today. I haven't even told Mom. Mom said that she knows. I kind of know. She thinks she knows. <laughs> anyway, okay, so just a couple of things I wanted to say now by way of announcement. Uh, we are uh, <clears throat> continuing with uh, services for the time being as we've been. Uh, good news is that now... In the last two weeks, um, I think it's now been a little bit over two weeks that there was this mass mandate put in North Dakota, and I don't know if that's the reason, but I would assume it has something to do with it, that we are finally seeing cases in North Dakota um, coming down. Of course, hospitalizations and deaths are a lagging uh, indicator, and so they are not coming down yet, but cases are, and so that's good news. Good job, everybody, in terms of uh, doing what you can to, um, to limit the spread, and hopefully... This means that we're turning the corner literally for, uh, for something much brighter and much better um, in the months to come. So, But for now, we're still here meeting as we are. But I wanted to make notice of the announcements. We're hoping to be able to perform a virtual Christmas play during the service on December 20th. Uh, parents, please look for details coming soon via email. Sarah is working together with Amanda, right? And you'll be in contact with people. So uh, parents, grandparents, children who can maybe be involved in this, we're going to do a little virtual play. It'll, it'll be just a fun thing to try and do, um, just to make uh, the Christmas season a little bit more like normal. A little bit more. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're continuing to pray for um, uh, those who have themselves in our congregation battled, <clears throat> battled COVID-19 for Janet Peterson, Tony and Janelle Johannesson for full recoveries. Uh, Leanne said we could take her off, that she has recovered almost uh, quite well, 
Um, and so just please keep those. And then I know the Ericsons that COVID was going as well and they're uh, through their family. And so continue to pray uh, that they're uh, well. And now I don't know, there may be more, but I haven't heard recently. Um, just a couple other me mentions here. Uh, Richard, uh, Richard Lecker, Lisa Erickson's father, passed away recently as well. And I just want to ask that uh, the church be praying for her and for her family. Uh, and then there's a number of others that I, I wanted to make mention of um, that, that are updates. Today I had just heard that uh, Steve Lambert um, from, let's see, from Kathy DeBolt, she let me know that Steve Lambert... Uh, is, is battling a staph infection again and had been moved from Fargo now back to uh, the Twin Cities. And so please be praying for Steve Lambert. Um, Myra Loden is uh, continuing, she said, with some chemotherapy um, uh, at this time, and so continue to pray for his healing. Um, and then there's a number of different ones there that I, I do just ask you to take a look at. Um, continue to be praying for each of the people that we have been for quite some time. Okay, uh, at this time, I am going to ask, we'll begin this morning with a brief order of, or I'm sorry, we'll begin with the blessing, the Advent blessing. And at this time, I'm going to ask Sarah to come and light the first candle. <clears throat> to walk in your light and to seek your ways and, uh, and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this wreath. Rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes, when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We'll continue on page 56 with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. This time we'll go to the um, opening hymn. I'm wondering if I... I we can flip those. Can we do oh, you want to do Come Thou Long? Yeah. Expected Jesus? Is that okay with you, Alex? Yeah. Okay. Right. Set that up so I can see it over here. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Can you see your mm -hmm. pals? Mm-hmm. Well, we are excited to we're excited to share with you this morning to sing with you. I hope that some of you in your own homes are are joining with us as so that it's a time of worship and not just a time of 
performance on our part, right? But we are excited. This time of year is so fun, and we're excited to sing some Christmas songs for you. Um, we're going to begin today with a classic Advent Christmas song, and I have two wonderful uh, singers joining with me. Uh, and uh, now, like I said, we're going to, um, the song is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and there's two verses in it that none of us had ever heard of or seen before, and <clears throat> they're wonderful words. And so Sarah posted these words, right? Yeah, it's on page two of the bulletins that are posted on Facebook. Okay, so the words are posted, you can read through them, follow along as we're singing, and uh, I think you'll find them to be pretty powerful as well. Um, they are, in fact, a sermon in and of themselves, so you'll get at least two sermons for Right? Okay. <clears throat> Are you ready, Alice? Ready for your solo? Expected Jesus. 
this time I'll have you join us for the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. And keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, at this time I'll have the readers come forward for today's reading. Yeah. Um, so, ouch. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask the kids kind of on the spot here if they will help me read. I promise that I will read the longest one. But Leo and Alice, if you could help me as well, that would be great. Should we get a chair? Yeah, that's that's what I plan. You gonna help me too? Okay. Then I do need a stool. Yeah. which is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Yep. So can you read um, a couple verses here, and then I'll try? Okay. Here, just a minute here. Move your finger. I'm going to go like this, okay? Oh, that you would peel open the heavens and come down. So that the mountains would quake at your hissing hand. When fire kid kindled his fourth wood, and fire causes water to boil, boil to make your name, boil to make your name know to. Your adversaries. 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 So that nations might tremble as your prisoner. Presence. Presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains quick at your from ages past no one has heard no ear has perceived perceived no eye has seen any God bless with mm -hmm. be it mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. be I with mm -hmm. who walks for those who wait for him. Good job. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly <coughs> angry, O Lord, and do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Here ends the reading. Ear, O 
shepherd of Israel. Psalm 80, verses 4 through 7, and Psalm 80, verses 17 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Ephraim and Benjamin and Manas, Mana, Manasseh. Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the, you make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Here ends the song. Oh, Leo, let me help you. Nothing. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait. For the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will always strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You will call in the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Gospel according to Saint Mark, the 13th chapter. <clears throat> but in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware and keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock, crow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And so I say, and so what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat>
I'm not sure really. How does that look? Like on that? It's really bright on your like white shirt. It's really bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. Just like a little bit. Right. So, as I promised earlier, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, a guest speaker coming today. Uh, I just changed. He's not here? Still not here? Okay, well, I'll go look for him a little bit. Um, can you do your... Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, I think you can go down. I, I found he is here. He's just getting uh, getting a couple of things ready. I'll just do a quick introduction, though. Um, it's a friend of mine from a long time ago, someone I got to know um, through many of the things I read of his. Uh, but I'll let him introduce himself when he gets out here. Okay, so he's going to share um, he's going to share a message with us today, a brief Advent message with us today. So, okay, I'll go make sure he's getting ready. You want to? Excited to see who it is. He's in the bathroom. wonder who this guest speaker is. Everybody's excited. My arms are getting tired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hanging. Shh. I Shh. can't see. Shh. Shh. Don't tell them. I know. It's amazing. How did you get him to come here? We'll find out. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, so good. Ich heiße Dietrich Bonhoeffer und ich komme aus Deutschland und sie bin ein dem Prediger. Ich war ein Prediger auch in der Lutherer Kirche. Ja, so heute möchte ich ein Predigt an Ihnen teilen. What? Oh, sorry. Very sorry. Uh, Jordan's telling me that most of the people here don't speak German. <laughs> sorry about that. I really appreciate uh, uh, Yeah, so let me pick up where I left off. Um, I'm visiting here from Germany today. Uh, my name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and I, as I've already said, I'm a preacher just just like your, um, your preacher here in, from a Lutheran church in Germany. 
and I would like to share one of the messages I gave 192 years ago, 1928. I shared a message that was an Advent message in Barcelona, Spain. It's one of my first. At the time, I was only 22 years old. So, that's what I would like to share with you today because uh, Jordan asked me to come because he thought that it had special importance for um, what, uh, what everybody's going through here today in this 19 or 2020, 21st century. So I'm going to share with you um, a brief part of my message. Um, I shared the whole thing with Jordan, but he said it was a little too long. Nowadays, people don't you know, like long, long messages, and they're a little too wordy. So I said, well, I'll just do a little brief message for you, and then he's going to talk a little bit about what I shared with you to try and translate it from the 1928s to the 2020s. Um, again, I'm sorry about the, uh, the wrong language. Why didn't you tell me? That's embarrassing. We can't speak German. I know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> okay. You can give me five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Celebrating Advent means learning how to wait. Waiting is an art which our impatient age has forgotten. We want to pluck the fruit before it has had time to ripen. Greedy eyes are soon disappointed when what they saw as luscious fruit is sour to the taste. In disappointment and disgust, they throw it away. The fruit, full of promises, rots on the ground. It is rejected without thanks by disappointed hands. The blessedness of waiting is lost on those who cannot wait, and the fulfillment of promise is never theirs. They want quick answers to the deepest questions of life, and miss the value of those times of anxious waiting, seeking with patient uncertainties until the answers come. They lose the moment when the answers are revealed in dazzling clarity. Who has not felt the anxieties of waiting for the, de for the declaration of friendship or of love? The greatest, the deepest, the most tender experiences in all the world demand patient waiting. This waiting is not an emotional turmoil, but gently growing like the emergence of spring, like God's laws, like the germinating of a seed. But importantly, not all can wait. Certainly not those who are satisfied, those who are content, those who feel that they live in the best of all possible worlds already. Those who learn to wait are uneasy about their way of life, but yet have seen a vision of greatness in the world and are patiently expecting its fulfillment. The celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. For these, it is enough to wait in humble fear until the Holy One Himself comes down to us. God and the child in the manger. God comes. The Lord Jesus comes. Christmas comes. Christians rejoice. In a few weeks, we shall hear that cry of triumph. But already, we can hear in the distance the sound of the angel's song, praising God and promising peace on earth. But not so quick. It is still in the distance. 
It calls us to learn to wait, and to wait in the right way. Jordan would like to have a word with me. Kingdom. I thought there was going to be a huge game on Sunday. Oh, it's not going to be. Well, ha. I'm back. Boy, I'll tell you what, you guys were fortunate today to experience something of the past. A person of the past. Um, he actually had to get going right away. Um, his time machine was taken off for the next location. And so um, I just wanted to get back here and share a couple of things with you. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Dietrich for coming and spending some time with us, uh, for sharing something that he shared nearly a hundred years ago uh, with this world, and he could share it again today. I just, uh, as I was hearing him speak though, uh, you know, he's a little upset with me because he had a much longer sermon. It could have gone on for a good 20-25 minutes, but um, I told him, I said, you say so much and so little, and so I need you to only say a little bit of your message because then I want to talk a little bit about what you said because I think it's all really valuable stuff. And so uh, I just uh, I want to I come now and I want to re respond. Respond to what our friend Dietrich, as Alice calls, D diet rich, but it's Dietrich. <laughs> um, I'm going to respond to what he had to say. And just briefly today. Um, it is Advent, and one of the key components of the Advent season is waiting, learning how to wait. We have Advent calendars. We actually have a few different forms in our house. Um, we have one that's going to have candy that we take out, one, one candy that I used to have when I was a kid. We have one that we have candies in, <laughs> another one. <laughs> I don't know, Advent has a lot to do with candy, but um, it's, all about, it's all about waiting. It's all about counting down. It's all about, it's all about looking forward and expecting something, right? That's what the Advent season is. And Bonhoeffer, in his, what he shared with us today, and really what was the introduction to his message, said a few very powerful things that I want to, to stick with you. I want you to, to, to let reside in you through this Advent season. And of course, the first thing he said is that Advent means learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. <clears throat> what does the word learning entail? What does it imply? It implies that it's not something we are instinctually or innately able to do. Waiting is not something that just comes easily to anybody. Um, I have, for most of my life, been a very impatient person. 
Um, I think I've changed a lot <laughs> recently. But, uh, but the truth is, you can ask my parents what it was like growing up with me. I was always in a hurry, always wanting to get going, always wanting um, to sort of snap, snap, snap. I didn't like to wait. But I don't think I'm really a lot different than most of us. I think a lot of us probably are um, start out our lives with very little ability to wait. Uh, as children, we begin to learn how to wait, and as adults, we learn and learn and learn. Bonhoeffer just simply reminds us that this whole idea of waiting and what we're doing at Advent is a microcosm of what we're waiting for writ large. It's a small way in which we acknowledge that although God has acted in our world through His Son, Jesus Christ, that although He has come, that sins are forgiven, although He's done one act, He has not yet done His final. And so we, human beings, the creatures created by God himself, living in the world today, are always in a space of waiting. Advent puts us into that, helps us relive that, helps us re-understand that, helps us relearn that each and every year. Bonhoeffer reminds us of that first and foremost. But he says celebrating Advent means learning how to wait. And then he says the blessedness of waiting is lost on those who cannot wait. So not only is waiting something we don't really know how to do, but it's something that actually blesses us. It actually gives us some type of blessing. That the very process of learning how to do something we don't know how to do, that is wait, is itself a blessing. And for those who don't learn how to wait, that blessing is lost. So there's a promise, and there's also a warning. Don't allow the blessing to be lost. And then thirdly, he says, not all can wait. Not all. This is where we think about where we're at. Are we a people? Am I a person who can wait? And not wait just for, um, <clears throat> you know, when I call and uh, uh, when I when I when I call and I have to be on the uh, waiting line when I'm trying to get through to. You know, a company or something. Typically, it's it's like when you call a cell phone company. That's usually where you have to wait the longest. Is it? Is it? Is, am I able to do that without getting frustrated? Am I able to wait in traffic without getting frustrated? Am I able to wait in line at school without getting frustrated if I'm a student? Bonhoeffer says that celebrating Advent means learning how to wait. He says that the blessedness of waiting is lost on those who never learn or who cannot wait. But he also says not all can wait. And I think at times we're all in that boat. That at times we can't wait. If I were to ask the question, are you able to wait? Are you one of those who is able to wait? You might answer, well, yeah, I'm, I'm able to wait. But then I might put like a secret camera in your car when you go to Fargo or the Twin Cities in rush hour. <clears throat> and we'll see how easily and comfortably we wait for those who we don't think are going fast enough in this world, doing things the right way in this world, right? I think all of us, at times, can be honest with ourselves and say we don't know how to wait. We don't. Bonhoeffer 
continues saying, certainly not those who are satisfied and content and feel that they live in the best of all possible worlds. You know, I often hear it said that America is the greatest country on earth. And that might be, that might be true. In fact, in many ways, I would say it is true. But it's also dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous because of the reason, the very thing he says. Those who are content and satisfied and live in the best of all possible worlds They don't know what it means to wait. They don't know what it truly means to wait for some type of fulfillment, to have some kind of longing. Right? There's so much I want to say today because, and this is where I, this is why I had to cut Bonhoeffer short. But our song we sang today, "Come, thou long-expected Jesus," consider the idea of waiting here. Come thou long expected, of course, waiting a long time, right? To, to set thy people free from our sins and fears release us, let us find our rest in thee. Bonhoeffer, he says, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. Come thou long expected Jesus. The people are looking forward. And then it says, Joy to those who long to see thee. Day spring from on high appear. Verse 3. Come to the earth to taste our sadness. He whose, who, whose glories knew no end. By his life he brings us gladness. Our Redeemer, Shepherd. You see, the promises of come thou long expected Jesus in this song are the very things that we're truly waiting for. But if we're content, if we're satisfied, if we believe we live in the best of all possible worlds, and there is nothing really better out there, then none of these verses hit home. There's nothing worth waiting for. There's nothing we're waiting for. You know, I think that to sort of draw this to a conclusion, to draw it down to sort of a practical place for those of us living in no, on November 29th in 2020, is to truly think about where we've been as a world, as a country, as a world over the past nine or ten months. And I think that this pandemic we can see as an act of waiting. And therefore we can see it as hard as it's been, as devastating as it's been for so many people. And so I say this in no way like but we can see it as a potential blessing. Because it has required us to wait. And we've all waited in different ways throughout. Right? Some are waiting to heal from the disease itself. Some are waiting simply for life to be normal again. Some are waiting to work again. They might have lost jobs. Some are waiting to have friends and family over for celebrations, for birthday celebrations, for holiday celebrations, the things we love to do as human beings. Some are waiting to go to a concert or to a live theater, something where large groups are gathered. Some are not waiting to see in eternity, those they have lost in the present. 
some are waiting to not have to wear a mask anymore. Some are waiting simply to be relieved of the anxiety that they have felt since March. There's other ways that we're waiting. But I think as we think about this Advent season, and we think about the season we've gone through as a church family, as a global community, that we can reframe this period as an opportunity, an opportunity to learn how to wait. As Bonhoeffer says, celebrating Advent means learning how to wait. I want to just encourage all of us to recognize in the other, in the neighbor, in the family member, in the co-worker, that everybody's waiting right now. But that we're all waiting in different ways. Just as I said. So the most that we can do is not only show grace to ourselves, be gracious to ourselves in our own waiting, drawing on strength from God, but allow ourselves to be gracious to others in their waiting. For whatever it is they're waiting for, in this all to be done. But in this time of Advent, never let the experience of the pandemic separate you from the experience of Advent. Instead, let it strengthen it. Let it give you the opportunity to truly have an experience of waiting in this Advent. And let it then connect you to the great experience of waiting not only for what the promise of God is at this time in your life, but waiting for the new heavens and the new earth, for God's promises to be fulfilled and for restoration of creation to be once and for all. Happy first Sunday of Advent. And again... <clears throat> Thank you to Mr. Bonhoeffer for sharing with us today. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you today for what this Sunday means. Uh, a step into a period of waiting. A period of uh, waiting, yes, for Christmas. But stepping into the whole history of waiting. Waiting for your promises to be completely fulfilled. Lord, we know that your promises have already been fulfilled in part but we await their fulfillment in full. And so, Lord God, we just ask for patience. We ask for strength to wait as we um, continue to uh, walk through a difficult time, a stressful time, an isolating time. Be with those, Lord God, who are struggling most right now. Bless them in their waiting. In Jesus' name. This time we're going to have a special number shared by Alice. She's going to play the piano, and we're going to have um, our Sarah sing.
Sarah and Alice. This time, I'll have you turn. You have a hymnal with you. Otherwise, most of you probably know by heart the Apostles' Creed. We join together in that, page 65. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll now turn to the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we come before you today, and we thank you. We thank you for drawing us each and every year into this season of Advent, into this season of waiting, into this season of learning how to wait. God, I pray that by your gracious mercy, you would come into each of our lives, no matter where it might be, that we are impatient, that we are unable to wait, that we are losing out on the blessing. Of waiting. By your mercy, Lord, enable us. Enable us to do just that. No matter what season we're in, no matter what we're looking forward to, Lord, give us the strength to wait. Father, I pray for your church, your whole church in this time, this time of pandemic, this time that the whole world wants to be over with yesterday. And so we wait. Lord, may your church be a demonstration of what it does mean to wait patiently. Knowing, Lord God, that you are present now and that you will be present tomorrow and every day. Guiding this world, Lord God, restoring this world, bringing your kingdom in its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We do pray for the nations, Lord God, of this world as they continue to battle the varying effects of the pandemic. We pray for each and every scientist and doctor working on vaccines. We ask that. We thank you for the, the, the good news we have received on that front, and we just pray, Lord, that, the thing, that things would begin to turn the corner in truth, that people, that there would be less pain, less suffering, less anxiety, less sickness, less death. Lord, we pray this for our nation and for all nations. For our own nation, Lord, we pray for continued healing of what is a divided nation, broken in so many ways. Father, heal our nation. Grant each of us generosity towards one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need today, Lord God, we continue to pray for the family of, of Lisa Erickson, who lost her father, Richard. Lord God, we pray for comfort in their time of sorrow. We continue to pray for those who have battled COVID, who are currently battling it. We 
the Erickson family for Janet Peterson, Tony, Janelle Johansson. Lord, we know that recovery takes a long time and we, for some, and we pray that you would continue to heal and bring them to full recovery. Lord God, we pray for, we also pray for Steve Lambert, as he is again in the hospital in the Twin Cities, that you would comfort him and his wife as they are going through a, a scary and difficult time. Lord, I pray also today for for Jerry Lugadensky, who this past week, or the week before, uh, suffered some heart issues. And Lord, the doctors, um, as they determine how to treat that, we pray that you would give them wisdom, that you would give Jerry strength in this time. And Lord, for all those needs that have not been mentioned today, the ones that we carry with us, Lord, we pray that you would meet each of those. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, for this church, we thank you for each person. We thank you for the, the many who have joined us today online. And we pray that you would bless them. Lord, that you would give them the strength to experience an advent of waiting that the fulfillment of Christmas might be a reminder of the fulfillment that one day will be the fullness of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, be with each person in this season, be with each person in this church as we continue to do our best uh, to walk through a difficult time. Thank you so much for the ministry that you have done in and through, even on, on this online format. Continue to bind us together by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Uh, at this time, let's see, I just wanted to make mention, as I have, uh, that uh, we are uh, continuing to, to, to ask that if you have been regular givers in the church, at the time when we used to meet together in person, we ask that you continue to give um, uh, from, the, uh, from the goodness of your heart and uh, as you support the ministry of this church. Uh, the way that we have offered, the way that we are, are enabling you to give is, is simply, we have, we have um, offered now a tab online, it would be on Facebook as well as on the website, that you can pay with a credit card, anything like that, um, or you can give, I should say, uh, with a credit card on there, and it's very simple. If you have any questions, um, please reach out to me. If I have questions, I can reach out to Jim Stiles. I know he was in instrumental in getting this set up, so thank you to him. Uh, and then also, we can just um, you can offer you can give offerings just by sending in the mail, put in care of Christine Henderson, and then mail them to the church address. So, thank you so much for your generosity through this time. I know that many of you have continued to give. And thank you, um, God bless you for that. And um, at this time, I would ask that you receive the final the final blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Now, don't go, because today we have a postlude. Uh, Leo's going to play um, a song that he had been working on for quite some time, and we thought before he moved on to something else, we wanted him to have the opportunity to play it in church. And this is what in church looks like now. So, Leo, you want to tell, tell them what song you're playing?
so good. Good job. Thank you, great. Leo. Thanks, everyone. Have a great, oh. have a great, uh, great rest of the week. We'll see you back next week. All right. I want to blow it up. We're not blowing it up.